the joy of the Lord will never stop in your life. The joy of the Lord will go with you. Your whole family, your place of work, everything that brought sorrow, everything that brought crying, everything is vanished away. I welcome you to this final day of this global crusade supernatural deliverance you got it and tonight the final the great the majestic the glorious deliverance of the Lord will come upon your life did you hear the saw in the hostel blind eyes opening Great things been done. Now, as you leave after the final amen, don't leave before the final amen. Something is going to be following you for the rest of your life. Miracle following you. Power following you. Anointing that breaks the yoke following you. If anything happens and the enemy, sickness, infirmity, whatever, knocks at your door, you look there and say, Jesus, everything will vanish away. Father, we well, thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. You are the gracious God, the great God, you are the glorious God, you perform wonders in every life. And I'm asking tonight, this final night, wonders upon every life. The wonder of salvation, the wonder of deliverance, the wonder of healing, the wonder of power irresistible. Confirm it in every life. Do something great, unforgettable in every life tonight. In Jesus' name. We thank you because we know it is done. I got my own. I got my own. You will not go empty handed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, tonight. It's your amen night. And so be watching. Every time I say something that demands amen, let that amen sink deep in your heart. Heaven will confirm your miracle. You can sit down in the blessing of the Lord. Tonight, we want to bring to conclusion what we have been learning and what we have been studying. And it's from Matthew chapter 6. It says in the final verse of that prayer that the Lord has taught us. It said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory how long forever and everybody shout amen. amen the lord tonight wants us to understand that as he becomes a father a father who art in heaven now here we are on earth when you stand on top of a story building, you see everything down below. When God abides in heaven, a father which art in heaven, and you honor his name because it's all, he sees everyone down here and he sees you. And when you remain abiding, consistent, 
continue with him. As he is in heaven, he sees everything you go through. And wants to say, a father, he'll say, yes, I'm here for you. And every miracle you need, he'll drop on you. Yeah. Our Lord, be thy name. You are here for just one goal, one ideal, one lifestyle that you wake up in the morning. All I want to do today is to honor you. All I want to do today is to hallow your name. And when that is your daily response to the personality of God, to the perfection of God, hallowed be thy name. Remember, he's up there and he's looking down and he's looking at you. And he knows that you are there for a constant project pilgrimage of honoring his name blessings will be following after you yeah. you never once any day dishonor his name defile his name call his name in vain consistently every day hallowed be thy name somebody curses before you Hallowed be his name. Somebody insults the glorious name of God before you. Hallowed be thy name. Your lifestyle is to honor, hallow, reverence his name. Thy kingdom come. All the time you live here on earth, you say, Lord, thy kingdom come. Kingdom of power. Kingdom of glory, a kingdom that crushes every other sin opposed to that government. And you live every day. Thy kingdom come. The power of the kingdom. The glory of the kingdom. The majesty of the kingdom will follow you all through your life. Thy will be not Lord, I wake up this morning. And all I want, thy will be done. Somebody is going to discuss a matter with me. All I want, thy will be done. And my wife and I, my husband and I, we're looking at this. I see this way. She sees it that way. Thy will be done. I go to the marketplace. I go to my profession. I go anywhere I go. And all I'm asking today is that the will of Satan will not be done in your life. The will of evil people will not be done in your life. That everywhere you go, every step you take, all you want, thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven, your life will be straightforward. Yeah. And the power of the Lord will be going with you every time. Yeah. Remember, where the kingdom is, the king is. And when the king reigns in your life without a rival, and the king reigns, in your family without a rival and the king reigns in every walk of your hand every step you take when the king of the kingdom reigns in your life your life will have purpose my life will have purpose and then his will be done when you have that idea, you have that understanding, and you know that God is in heaven and is watching you. And every step you take, everywhere you go, any action of your hand, thy will, thy will, you will not have anxiety. Anxiety, worry, fear kills many people in the world. But since you know your heavenly Father is in charge, I said, your heavenly father is in charge. And all you want is his will. Then you know, anxiety is gone. 
and all the fears of the world, everything is gone. And then, look at verse 11 there. It says in verse 11, give us this day a daily bread. By the way, that's prayer. But the Lord has put it in such a way as a child asks the father for breakfast and the father never says no. When you tell the heavenly father, give us this day our daily bread, he will never say no. I didn't get your amen. Uh, you know, some people... They go to study Greek, Hebrew, Latin. And they go to study Bible, high places. Then they come back and they tell us, they say, when we pray, God may say no. They say that is answer. They say God may say, <coughs> wait. <clears throat> you are blessed. Yeah. They say God may say, okay, yes. It's like a child coming to the father, coming to the mother, and then, daddy, mommy, I need breakfast. And they say, daddy may say, no. Does, does your family say no for breakfast? He says, yes, say now. It will satisfy every need of your life. Yeah. When we come to the Almighty God and we say, give us this day our daily bread, our daily need, our daily supply, it will never say no to you. Yeah. Tonight, heaven will say yes. Yeah. Tonight, God will say yes. Look at 12 there. It says, forgive us our debts. Remember, remember, we're talking about a child, our heavenly father, our father, which art in heaven. And then you come and you say, Father, I've sinned against heaven. And against you. And I'm not worthy to be called your son. Immediately it will embrace you. It will accept you. It will forgive you. And any time, every time, something happens that you need to say, Father, forgive me. It will forgive you. And tonight, as you realize where you have been, what you have done, and sincerely, you know, you cannot live with guilt and condemnation and succeed in life. You come to the Heavenly Father, take my guilt away. Take my condemnation away. The Lord will send His salvation, His restoration unto every one of us. And now, verse 13, verse 13 says, and lead us not into temptation lead us not into temptation we're talking about the father of the family the king of the universe he does not want trouble in your life temptation in your life anything that will swallow you up and drown you in the sea of suffering here on earth there beyond he doesn't want anything like that for you. And if you are always looking up to him, Father in heaven, I'm here for you. I'm here for your name. I'm here for your glory. No temptation will come to you that will destroy your life. And deliver us from evil. Now, if you, that watch evil there, if you put D before that evil, what is that? D for danger and then evil. When you connect them together, danger, evil, devil, and the Lord will deliver you. 
That devil may be waiting at the corner there. That devil, I don't mean your corner there, I mean corner somewhere there. Because he'll never get near you. Yeah. Whatever is hiding, the Lord will see from heaven. You understand? Here we are on earth, and I look, and there's something covering, standing before that devil hiding there. But the Father, who is up on high, he has seen where that devil, where evil is hiding. And before you pass by, the Lord will chain that evil and that devil down. Yeah. You will pass on to progress. Pass on to success. And pass on to the destiny that the Lord has for you. That's why I know a Jesus tarries. When I come back, Amen. You'll still be there. Amen. Nothing will destroy your life. Amen. Nothing will destroy your progress. Amen. Because thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory from now forever. In Jesus' name. As we finalize tonight, I want to talk to you on perpetual supernatural deliverance. Supernatural deliverance, present, permanent, perpetual, till the end of your life. For abiding pilgrims. For abiding pilgrims. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 18, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Amen. Say it for yourself. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, today we're looking at three points in the message. Number one, the miracles from the king, protection and guidance. Number two, the majesty of the king, with power and glory. Number three, the making of kings and priests unto God. Look at number one there. Number one, the miracles from the king, protection and guidance. It tells us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before you can say that effectively, number one, you come, you're a child of God. You come, you're born again. You come, and through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord, you have been converted. You have been changed. Your life has been turned around. And you have become a member of the family, a child to the heavenly father. It's only then, after your sins are forgiven, after salvation has come to you, after the restoration has come for the backslider, it's then you can say, Lead us not into temptation. When you hate temptation, when you turn your back against temptation, and when you deride, and when you jettison, and when you throw away all temptation. Now, if you love something, you cannot be holding to that thing and say, Lord, lead me not into this. What you are holding on to that is when you have been saved. And you don't take joy in those temptations anymore. And you don't take joy in those evil things anymore. It's then you can say, Lord, I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't desire it. I don't want to go that direction anymore. You can help me 
lead us not into temptation. The temptations of the past that you fell into, the Lord has forgiven you. And then after that forgiveness, and he has set you free, and temptations will still come, you say, Lord, I don't want it. I don't want to fall into it. I don't desire it. I don't like its look. I don't like its taste. I don't want the temptation. Deliver. And the Lord will deliver you. Remember, after your salvation, that you are telling the Lord, I used to fall into that. I used to smoke that. I used to drink that. I used to be lured and tied into that. But now, I'm saved. I'm different. I don't want that anymore. Look at what I'm saying in Psalm 32. Psalm 32, we're looking at verse 1. It says in Psalm 32, reading from verse 1, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That is, all the transgressions of the past, all the sins of the past, you have brought them to the Lord, and you hate anything that will drag you back there again. That's how you remain blessed. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity. In no spirit, there is no girl, and there is no internal desire for the temptations of the past there's no uh, secret connection with the tempters and the temptresses of the past and there is uh, no affinity and no love no desire for the temptations that come because now your past is cleansed your life is forgiven that's when you can honestly say lead us not into temptation look at verse 7 there in verse 7 it says thou art my hiding place thou shall preserve me from trouble it will preserve you from trouble I said it will preserve you from trouble but if the trouble is there and you're not even invited and people are breaking bottles and they are being whatever with one another and then you look at it and you say okay before i came to the crusade i used to enjoy that kind of thing and then you go there how can it preserve you from the trouble already you are the one transporting yourself and going there to that trouble trouble will not come to you but please don't go searching out for trouble fight will not come to you but don't go searching out for fight intoxication of alcohol will not come to you but don't you go searching for intoxication drugs Hard drugs will not come to you, but don't you go out searching for them. If the Lord is going to deliver us from trouble, from trial, from tribulation, from temptation, we keep ourselves away. The grace of God has now come into our lives, and things are different now. And thou shalt compass me with the songs of deliverance. You will sing. You will not cry. You will see. You will not regret. Your life from today in the hands of Christ, in the hands of Jesus, with salvation, with deliverance, with joy, with happiness, will be a life of singing. Your sing of Calvary on the past. You sing of glory in the future. You sing of preservation, deliverance every day of your life. Every day of my life. I will sing. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Lord, how do I succeed? 
I'll teach you the way you will go to succeed. How do I overcome? I will teach you now. If at the end of the crusade, you say bye-bye to the Bible, bye-bye to Christian fellowship, bye-bye to church attendance, bye-bye to listening to those members of the choir, bye-bye uh, for the prayer warriors, bye-bye to a Bible-believing church. How will the Lord instruct you? When he instructed Israel, he sent Moses. When he instructed the children of Israel in Canaan, he sent Joshua. When he instructed the people of Israel, why stand ye between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If a bear, serve him. And he brought them back. He sent Elijah. And when he sent, he wanted to instruct Israel in the new covenant. He sent Jesus. I will instruct thee and teach thee. How do you get instruction without an instructor? How do you get teaching without the teacher? The Lord is saying, don't abandon, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Get to a Bible-believing church. Get to a church honoring Christ, honoring the Father. Get to a church that will show you the way of the Lord. After the crusade, you don't sit back at home. You find a way to link up with the church. And we have churches all over. I don't mean a deeper life Bible church. Yes, deeper life Bible church, one of the churches. And then we have can. We have all the various churches. Get to a church that honors the Lord. Instruction will always come to you. Teaching will always come to you. Amen. Because the God of heaven will instruct you and teach you in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide you with mine eyes. Amen. Your life. Amen. Amen. Guidance for you. Amen. Amen. And when the Lord guides, it will not guide you into failure. It will not guide you into defeat. It will not guide you into danger. It will guide you with his eyes. Look at number two here. Number two here, the majesty of the king for power and glory. It tells us in Matthew chapter 6, reading there from verse 13, it says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The kingdom is the kingdom of power. Thine is the kingdom and the power. The kingdom is the kingdom of glory. Thine is the kingdom and glory. Now, tomorrow, next month, next year, forever, forever, forever. That power will never fail in your life. It's able to sustain us. It's able to keep us. It's able by its majestic power and glory. To set us free from everything that binds and then our lives can move on in the power and the glory of the Lord. Look at Jude chapter 1 verse 24. Jude chapter 1 verse 24. Now unto him that is able, our God is able, is able to forgive you. He will do that tonight. He's able to set you free. He will do that tonight. He's able to heal you. He will do that tonight. He's able to deliver you. He will do that tonight. He's able to work a miracle, unforgettable miracle in your life. 
you will do that tonight. Good, good, amen. Now, 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 when? When is the power of God coming upon your life? When will he set you free? When will he deliver you? When will he wipe out, blot out every sin you ever committed in your life? Let me hear you. Now unto him that is able, able to keep you. Able to keep you. Able to keep you. Now, if you are not looking for trouble, and trouble came, it will keep you. Daniel was not searching for lions. Daniel was not saying, where are the lions? I want to show how powerful I am. No, no, no. He was praying. And as he was praying, the people that didn't like prayer, and they didn't like the fact that he's so intimately connected with the God of heaven, they said, uh-huh, we caught him. If anyone will pray to any God anywhere within these 30 days, he'll be thrown into the lion's den. And he was a prayerful man. You will be a prayerful man. You'll be a prayerful woman. Now, some people say, some people are specially endowed for prayer. And they call them prayer warriors. But you know, you don't have to be endowed with a special gift to ask bread to ask blessing to ask benefits to ask good things from the heavenly father is the right of everyone in the kingdom and once you know that your father has a listening ear he will hear you you just ask him he shall be giving to you seek and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. We don't need any special gift to ask, to seek, and to knock. And we don't need any special gift whatsoever. You ask of the Father in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now, Daniel... Pray just like that, like you pray, like I pray, like everybody ought to pray. And then they cast him to the lion's den. You are not looking for lions, but then they cast you into the lion's den. The Lord will keep you alive. There's no lion in the world. There's no power in the world that can stop the plan of God for your life. But you know, you must come to him and say, you are my father. Father, what in heaven? Hallowed, honor, glorified, be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done <clears throat> here in my life. Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And now, there's trouble there, there's trial there, there's temptation there. And you belong to God. I'm assuring you, our God cannot fail. He will keep you from that sickness. After he has sealed you, he'll keep you from that evil thing. And then it says, and to present you faultless, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Verse 25 says, To the only wise God. A father is wise. I said, A heavenly father is wise. The devil is cunning. 
The devil is clever. God is wiser. Conspirators are wise, in quotes. They want you to land on something dangerous. Our God is wiser. Let me have a good amen from you. You're the only wise God, our Savior, when you have been saved. When you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this God, our Redeemer, this God, our Savior, brought you to himself. The glory unto him, the glory and majesty and dominion and power. But now, now means today. Today, the glory of God will roll those problems away. Today, the power of God will solve that problem. Today, the authority and dominion of the Lord will avail for you. Both now and ever. And everybody shout. Amen. In your life, the Lord will receive glory. Anything that will bring disgrace to your life, the Lord will not allow it. Anything that will bring degradation, falling into something, say, huh? but to say you are a child of God, it will not happen to you again in Jesus' name. The name of the Lord, the power of the Lord will work in your life without any restriction in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the making of kings and priests unto God. The making of kings and priests unto God. The Lord is going to remake you today. Amen. Remodel your life today. And watch you have never been able to do. The mountain you have never been able to climb. The success you have not been able to achieve. Tonight is the beginning of great things in your life. No more defeat. No more sorrow. No more accident in your life. No more deprivation. No more poverty. A change is coming upon your life. Look at this. Look at Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the false begotten of the dead, and the priests of the kings of the earth, Unto him that loved us. Unto him that loved us. God loves you. God loves you. Maybe he doesn't love everything you've done, but he loves you. He doesn't love all the bad language, but he loves you. He doesn't love... All the going astray that you are not steady, but he loves you. And tonight, as you come, his love will forgive you. His love will cleanse you. Unto him that loved us and washed us. You see that? Because he loves you. That's why he washes you. Not because I contributed money. It's not because I'm a goody goody person. It's not because I'm a self righteous person. It's not because I am somebody that does this and did that. He loves you because God is love. For God so loved the world, the world, the sinful world. The defiled world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have 
everlasting life. As you believe on the Lord today, what are you going to have? He loved us and washed us. He loved us and washed us. He doesn't want us to perish. He doesn't want us to die in sin and go to the other side away from God. He wants you near him. That's why he loved you and he washed us from our sins in his own blood. And then look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, And he has made us kings and priests <clears throat> unto God and to his Father. He has made us kings and priests. That's the reason why. Because the Bible says, What the word of the king is, there is power. Shout amen. amen. When he makes you a king, when he makes you a priest, he says he has made us. Why? When? How? As you came to the Lord, as you bent before the Lord, as you confess before the Lord, as you say, Lord, here I am. I don't want to stay where I've been staying. I don't want to keep on doing what I've been doing. I come. The Lord himself will give you that opportunity. He'll wash you. He will wash you. And your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. He cleanses you completely. He'll set you free completely. And every stain of sin every guilt of sin every condemnation of sin will wipe away from your life yeah. amen yeah. and has made us kings and priests unto god and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever yeah. amen Let's come back. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 13. Sorry, chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. How long? For how long? Forever. 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 I don't know whether you can do this in your imagination. From where you are now, draw a line. And then the end of that line, the edge of your life. Then you draw another line over there. Keep on drawing, keep on drawing, keep on drawing forever, forever, forever. Which one is longer? Forever. That means your life is inside that longer line. Yeah. And if there is power, if there is glory, if there is majesty, if there is healing, if there is deliverance, forever, forever, your own life inside that line, healing for you. Deliverance for you. Amen. Salvation for you. Amen. Answers to prayer in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, now look at this, look at this. When it says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Tell me the last word there. Amen. Tell me, tell me again. Amen. Watch. Does that mean? Amen. Means the promises are confirmed. Yeah. Every promise the Lord has made. Amen means all the promises of salvation, of healing, of deliverance, of protection, of provision. Amen. All promises 
confirm. Amen. amen. Number two, it means when we say amen, it means principalities and powers conquered. That amen finishes principalities and powers away from your life. When we say amen, it means those principalities running after your life, those principalities that wanted to get you down, the amen captures them, the amen conquers them tonight. Amen in your life. Principalities and powers will be conquered, crushed out of your life in Jesus' name. Number three, amen means the plagues and the sicknesses are cured. Because amen is the last word. Amen is the final word. Amen is heaven's authority. Amen means all the plagues, all the sicknesses tonight, they are cured in your life. God says amen. Christ is the amen. And we who come to God for any blessing, when we say amen, that means our sicknesses are cured. My sicknesses are cured. Number four, amen, means problems and perplexities cancelled. You didn't hear that one. Problems in your life, perplexities in your life, cancelled. If you can stay, if you can abide, if you remain until the end of the amen, the final amen, problems will not follow you home. Perplexities will not follow you home. Amen. What does that mean? Number five, provision, pledge, consummated. The pledge the heavenly father has made. The provision that the heavenly father has assured. That amen means it is now complete and consummated. Provision coming for you. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me by the rivers of water and then he sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. He's, and then he says that here before your enemies, he anoints your head and your cup will run over. And surely goodness and mercy will follow. Goodness and mercy will follow. What will follow you tonight? What will follow you home? What will follow you to your place of work? What will follow you to the village? What will follow you everywhere? Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I, and I, and I, and I will abide in his house for how long? Forever, forever, forever. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe in me also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So that where I am, there ye will be also. I will be there. I will be there. 
because he is our Savior and because he is our Lord, Amen means provision, pledge, complete, consummated. Number six, Amen means position, priesthood, power, comfort. When we say Amen, he establishes us in a place, in a position of authority. And you are now a king. When you have come to the Lord, the king's kid. And where the word of the king is, there is power. Power will explode. All the problems and challenges of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen means our position in Christ, our priesthood in the Lord, and our power, that power is conferred upon us already. Amen. Number seven means petitioner and power connected. Petitioner, that's the one that is making a request and saying, God, save me. When we say amen, that petitioner uh, that petitioner and the power of God, the pardon connected. Lord, purify me. When we say amen, it means the petitioner and that purity, they are connected. Lord, fill me with your power. He shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, and to the uttermost part of the earth. You say, Lord, I come. I don't want to be weak anymore. I want power. Power from on high. When we say amen, it means the petitioner and the power, they are connected. When we say, Lord, you said you will heal. You said you will deliver. And Lord, I come. I come for that healing. I come for that deliverance. When we say amen, then the petitioner asking for the healing, asking for the deliverance, the petitioner is connected with power. Tonight, power, Amen. healing, Amen. deliverance, Amen. miracle, Amen. you are connected already. Amen. I said you are connected already. Amen. Forgiveness will come. Amen. There will be connection between you and forgiveness. Amen. Salvation will come. There will be connection between you and the salvation of the Lord. Miracle. Somebody shout miracle. Yeah. Miracle. Somebody shout miracle. Yeah. When we say the final amen, there will be connection between you and the miracle that you need in Jesus' name. Yeah. Everyone is ready. Are we ready on earth? God is ready. Are the people there ready? I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. The Lord is going to produce heavenly amen in your life right now. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord has been waiting for you. For this time that you recognize he loves you. And because he loves you, he wants to forgive you. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to turn your life around. He wants to give you forgiveness and salvation. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You see, I want that connection tonight. I want that conversion tonight. I want that coming to the Lord to be affirmed and confirmed tonight. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. This is the final night. Don't allow this time to pass you by. Raise up that hand. I want forgiveness. I want to be free from guilt. I want to be free from condemnation. I want that salvation tonight. And I know whosoever shall call 
on the name of the Lord will be saved. Raise up that hand and say, Lord, salvation tonight, forgiveness tonight. I want it. As you are raising up your hand, stand up wherever you are. You're saying, I want the connection between the penitent and the pardon. You're penitent. You're telling the Lord, I'm sorry for every bad thing I have ever done. Every bad thing I've ever smoked, drunk. Any bad thing I've ever acted out. Lord, I can't. I can't. Raise up that hand. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Praise the Lord. Tonight is your night. I said tonight is your night. While you're standing up, tell the Lord over there where you are. Lord, I will not go back to those sinful habits, sinful life anymore. Lord, forgive me now. Lord, change my life now. Grant me your forgiveness and grant me your salvation now. Lord, I come. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. I'm sorry. I'm penitent. I'm repentant. And then you connect the penitent with the pardon. He'll forgive you. Amen. I want to hear the amen. 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 We're going to pray together now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that all these who have desired, who have asked, who have pleaded for their forgiveness, for their salvation, grant them that forgiveness and that salvation now in Jesus' name. Bear witness in their hearts that their sins are forgiven. Their sins are blotted out. Guilt, condemnation is taken away from them and that they now have the salvation of the Lord. Confirm salvation in their hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. That answer has been confirmed now in Jesus' name. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they will give you slips to feel. Feel correctly. So that we can continue together in the kingdom of God. We we'll call on our overseer to help us at this time of the counseling session. Let our counselors move around and take their names, phone number, addresses. Make sure you write very clearly If you are standing up, wave your hands to those, to those counselors if, if they are not gotten to your side. Please let, let the counselor move very fast to where the people are. Let's move very fast. Raise up your hand as you are standing up if nobody is coming to your side. You are taking decision, powerful decision, decision for Christ to reign with him. The Lord has confirmed your salvation. You are connected with the Almighty God. Give correct address, the correct name, and phone number. Let our counselor be careful that the right correct digit, 11 digits.
we are expected to remain where we are sit seated, not to go home now. It's not time to go home. Miracle prayer will be prayed for everybody. You don't go home the way you came. Vehicles will not move until we are done here. So let's wait patiently for miracle prayer. If you are there, you are not just to stand or sit or be looking around. Pray to God that today is my day. Others are receiving their miracle. I will receive my miracle. I will not be a spectator. Cancel us. Let's move fast and do the canceling. Take the that data, names, phone number, and address properly. You are telling the Lord, I'm not going back with my problem. I'm not going back with my, my sorrow. I'm not going back with the, the sickness. I have testimony. I will give my testimony tonight. Tonight is a night of testimony. There's a link for you to fill, to fill the form for those who are giving their life to Christ online. You fill the form and send to us. Online people who are giving your life to God, fill the form. There's a phone number there. To those of you listening on the radio, send your details to this number. Plus 234-915. 444-9263. Let's take the number again. Plus 234-915-444-9263. Our Father and the Lord will be happy to communicate with you. You are welcome to the big family of Christ. Cancel us. Let's move around to the far back, extreme left and extreme right. Like the front is covered. If the front is covered, you can move towards the back. Pray if you are not being cancelled. I will not go back the same way I came. The Lord will touch you. We take away your sickness. Don't be in a hurry to go. Counselor, after finishing your section, supervisor. You should wave the flag to show that you are finished in your section. I can see the flag on the right hand side at the back. I can see the flag in the front. I can see the flag at the left hand side in front. Yes, I can see the flag left hand side at the back too. Thank you. Thank you. Also, the flag is flying at the far back on the right hand side. Thank you. At the far back left side, also the flag is flying there. Let the counselor move around to check up if there's anybody that has not been cancelled, that has not been attended to. Nobody should be left unattended to.
Yes, I can see the flag in the middle there. Thank you. Ensure we finish the work at the far back. At the far back, the middle is covered. There's no flag flying at the far back. Be getting ready for miracle. Be getting ready for signs and wonders. Our Father and Lord prayed last night. Those who waited on getting to the hotel, their, their, their problem were rolled away. So wait and get your miracle prayer. Pass me not by, O oh gentle Savior. He will not pass you by. He will not pass you by. Today is my day. Tonight is my night. I'm not taking no for an answer. He's a great king. He did it for others. You do your own tonight. Yes, some people are already praying. He did it for others. He opened the eyes of the blind. The lame walked. Mine will not be difficult. Whatever the situation, whatever your condition, Amen. A confirmation is coming in your life. A manifestation is coming in your life. And remember, remember, as we're praying, we're praying on the basis of the promises of God. And it's a faithful God, the God that cannot fail. The God that cannot lie. The God that will always, in the day, in the night, always fulfill His promise. That's the God that is here present. The God that will manifest His power, His glory, His unction, His authority, even now at the Alpha location. And those online, the Lord is right there. If you know He's omnipresent, present here and present with you. And because He's present there with you, a miracle is happening to you online right there. Yeah. Any congregation where you are, in any country, in any continent, the name of Jesus is mighty. The name of Jesus is powerful. Whatever your challenge may be, you will roll that challenge away right now in Jesus' name. And so we get ready now. Whatever the challenge is, a father what in heaven is looking down from heaven and he sees you there. You need a miracle, raise up that hand. You need a healing, raise up that hand. You need deliverance, raise up that hand. And then you lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And after the final amen, that's the final confirmation. That's the final sin that conquers every power of the enemy. And that is the final amen that brings healing and cure to whatever problem you have. That's the final amen that cancels every problem and every sickness and perplexity in your life. It's the final amen that tells us that the provision of heaven and the pledge of heaven 
is consummated is the thing that brings you to a position of authority and the position of a child of God always receiving that the final amen that connects you with the solution with the answer and with the power it will happen to you tonight it's up one hand and lay the other hand on yourself Father, in Jesus' name, we come, you told us to come. We ask, you told us to ask. We're knocking at the door of heaven. You told us to knock. We're seeking, seeking your favor, seeking your healing, seeking your deliverance, seeking solution to every problem. And you said, we will find. Yeah. We'll find answer. Yeah. We'll find miracle. Yeah. We'll find healing. Yeah. We'll find dominion. Yeah. We'll find deliverance. Yeah. Lord, confirm it in every life now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Roll all the problems away. Yeah. Knock the hand of the devil away from every life in Jesus name heal the sick here heal the sick over there heal the sick on radio on television heal the sick online wherever people are connected now connect them with your power connect them with your healing Connect them with your manifestation. Heal them everywhere in Jesus' name. Insanity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Blindness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, dim eyes, be opened and begin to see brightly in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb be healed in Jesus' name. Tumor, fibroid, ania, hunchback, by the authority of the commandment of the Lord, come out in Jesus' name. Pile be healed in Jesus' name. Is your blood dry up in Jesus' name? incurable disease like cancer like kidney failure like sickle cell whatever the Lord touch you right now be healed be delivered be set free lame man on the wheelchair I send forth the power of God upon your life in the strength of the Lord Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Lord, miracles everywhere. Power manifestation everywhere. Deliverance supernatural everywhere. Answer to every prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Confirmation in your life, in Jesus' name. Check up yourself. You'll see the miracle has been performed. And whatever you were not able to do before, do that now. You have been made whole. It is.